Hello and welcome to another episode of our 9X tool demo series, where we introduce you to the latest and greatest SaaS in the no-code operations world. Each episode, we're basically joined by a new tool and they have just nine minutes to show exactly what they can do. My name is Jan, I'm one of the co-founders of 9X and I have the great pleasure today to be welcomed by Matt, founder and CEO of Summit. Matt, great to have you on. Thanks for having me, Jan. Awesome. Now let's maybe we can get started straight away and you can share a little bit about what is Summit? What are you building there? Yeah, so Summit is a no-code platform that allows users to build what we call models and models are new building blocks for your existing workflows. So think of them as APIs you can call, but that means they're really easy to call from places like Zapier, or HubSpot and Make. I ah, gotcha, because I think one interesting point when I was first looking at Summit, when you, I saw the different like workflows and things that you built, I sort of had the idea that it could be something that you would be replacing Zapier with, but actually it's more about even enriching your workflows further. Yeah, exactly. We, you know, There can be a lot of investment in a platform like a Zapier or a Make or a HubSpot. And so rather than getting people to migrate over, we say, you know, what are the limitations? What are the things you wish you could do? And then we're building a tool on our side that is extremely complementary to those other platforms. Awesome. And I guess as in like most no code, especially like workflow automation tools, and also with like touching on AI a little bit, we really see that these tools can serve, can solve a lot of problems for many different users and different business functions. But yeah. what are your main, you, do you have like a sort of a main user demographic that you see using Summit more than others or, or who are the main users um, using it? The users are coming to us from a variety of places. I would say that the thing they have in common is they are finding the limitations of their existing tools to be uh, frustrating in terms of transforming data. So we think that extracting data, in other words, triggering uh, a workflow and really a destination for data, those are pretty table stakes these days but it's the in-between part where there's really a lot of value to be created. And I think that's what GPT and AI shows us is the T stands for transform, right? And yeah. it's the transformation of data between the beginning and the end of the workflow where there's just so much more value to be created these days. Definitely. All right, I'm, uh, I'm excited to take a look. Should we get into it? Awesome, let's do it. How's that? Looking good. Okay. Design is uh, on point, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> we we want to have modern modern look and feel, but we also want to be really efficient with the user experience. So we have keyboard shortcuts. We want things to load quickly, etc. So we love that kind of feedback. And awesome. I, I want to walk you through an example in, in nine minutes. Obviously, that's not enough time to show you all of them. We give you these quick starts to start off your journey with us. You can do things like searching the web for news, maps, and real-time information, feeding that to GPT. We have a PDF extraction tool where you can pull data out of a PDF web scraping. We work with numbers, which is really differentiated here. So this says calculation. A lot of no-code tools make you use JavaScript once you're getting into math. You don't have to get into JavaScript with us. You can actually just write mathematical functions using Summit. But yeah, I wanted to show the screenshot one because I think it, it's fun and uh, it'll drive home the point. So let's load it up. Okay, so just basic overview. It's a canvas. Uh, I'm sure that's familiar to everyone uh, that's watching this. But the first step in our journey here is a screenshot. And the screenshot is of a particular URL or a page. Let's say you have a workflow in Zapier or HubSpot, and it's a new, you have a new prospect that comes in the door and it's a whale, it's intercom, <laughs> let's say. So in this example, it's intercom.com uh, slash pricing. And what we want to do is we want to, we could scrape that page, right? So we could, and Summit has scrapers as well. You could try to scrape pricing information from that page, but these days it's even easier to take a screenshot, feed that to GPT, because GPT 4.0 actually takes images, and then just ask GPT to summarize the pricing information on that page. And that's what this workflow template does. So I'll click run and then uh, feel free if you have any questions, but we can take a look. So a couple things that are unique here. So yes, we did a screenshot to AI and then out. But another thing is you notice in the in the output set here, and I'll scroll up so you can see more of it. We, we actually have two things going on. One is yes, we get the raw response from GPT but we asked in the prompt for GPT to return that pricing information as a JSON object. So in a lot wow, of other amazing. tools, you might have to say, okay, now take this raw data and then parse it using a code block. We know that you're probably trying to get structured data out. So we automatically parse the AI response into a JSON object, which means you can run with it uh, on the next step. So you see here, it says intercoms pricing. We have essential price is $39. The plan is this advanced expert, et cetera. So we got a JSON object straight from straight from AI, you know, in one workflow. Super cool. Yeah. 
And I think the then the question always is, okay, how do I actually make use of this? We have on the left-hand side, a bunch of ways to connect. I'm gonna click set live first because you do have to publish these models as APIs before you can use them. So this is set live. That now means that if I wanna start calling this straight from code, I can do that. That's one option. So every model that you build in Summit has an endpoint. And so I can post to this and I can get the response back. So it's integrate with anything. But naturally, you know, for no coders, this is something that you want to do from a place like Zapier, or HubSpot, or even Clay. So we provide a video here that shows you how to use this from Zapier. But one thing I want to show, and it's a nice detour, this model doesn't have any input fields. So before we call from Zapier, let's quickly modify this template. And we're going to say that the URL is something that we want to input dynamically from Zapier, wherever we're calling it from, because that would be like our prospects URL. So we went ahead and updated that. I republished, and now you can see this, when you call this from Zapier, it'll have this input field called URL. So we actually just designed our API for this model on oh, the wow. fly. Yeah. That's amazing. Cause that's one, like I've seen before in other tools where you try, sort of create these universal endpoints in Zapier or in Make, but then the mm -hmm. person always needs to know like what inputs am I sending it? If you're just sending an API request to that Make scenario yeah. or to that Zap, they need to know this. So that the fact that you can actually determine your data structure coming in is yeah. a huge plus. Yeah, on the fly. So if I wanted to make the prompt an input as well, I could. And so that could come from anywhere. So I'll, I'll go into Zapier now. If I refresh, I'm already connected. It's just an API key to connect this account. So then let's make sure that this is actually connected to the right account. Continue. And so just to re like reiterate on the wording, so what you've just created there, like what we typically call a workflow, that's basically a model. And then you can create different models, which can then be called from other no-code tools. Yeah, device. thank you for that. So we consider these our companion apps. So we have a companion app inside of Zapier, inside of HubSpot, and inside of Clay, which is an action there. And these are like drawers of all your models. So you can see here, I have my screenshot GPT model that I just created. I can click and choose it. And then it see it automatically picked up that URL input field. And so this could Super be nice. obviously coming from anywhere. So. Again, we're really trying to say, and this is our Models by Summit companion app. So you can get to it just by saying search for models. This is in private beta still. So if you want it, you just request access. But all I did was really just add that one building block and it's super flexible, right? So you can use this to do really to call any model that's in your Summit account. And so this is what we also can see is maybe you have six or seven steps inside of Zapier. You could condense that potentially down into just one model that's inside of Summit and just call it and get it back. And it cleans up your workflow inside of Zapier. I think it's really nice. It's also similar to like what we see sometimes in working inside of companies. Obviously, people will be on different stages in their no-code journey and you'll have some people who are building more advanced workflows mm -hmm. and others who are maybe just a bit more earlier on and they know how to do some simple things in Zapier. So it's actually really nice that you can have teams supporting each other. You can have the real yeah. no-code geeks, as we like to call it, building the sort of models in, in the summit, but then the whole team can actually leverage from their genius, basically. You don't need yeah. to rebuild everything that someone else has already done. That's right. They can use and reuse these building blocks. And especially if that genius makes those parameters all variables, then they yeah. can build one function that everybody just reuses all over the place, right? And so you can see how we got the response back. Here's all the raw data, but then Summit went ahead and parsed it into structured JSON. So this one, if I was going to use it from Zapier, I'd clean it up a little bit more and move that object up to a higher level. But you can see these are this is structured output. So that's awesome. inside of Zapier. I also want to call attention to the fact that you can call this from HubSpot as well. So we have a HubSpot integration. If you connect your HubSpot account, we just ask for a few permissions to look at contacts and companies from a read basis. But then inside your workflows step, if you have workflows in HubSpot, you can also add a run a model step. So in oh, this nice. case, I'm connected to a different account. So I'll see a different set of models. But again, same idea. You can add a step here. And you know, if you've used HubSpot, you know that it's really good. You know, all the triggers you could ever want are right here. So we don't need to reinvent that part. But the idea that you could take a URL from a prospect, run that same analysis, pass it through GPT, use that screenshot technology, you know, screenshotting, get it back, and then update this, this company prospect record, right, with this pricing information for your salesperson to have, you know, at their fingertips before the next meeting, right? That's just one of a million use cases here. Well, that's super cool. Do you know if, because one issue we often see with on the HubSpot side with their workflows, as you mentioned, the triggers are super strong and powerful. But for instance, what we like to use a lot is webhooks. And that's something that's only available for, I believe, enterprise or professional level on the service plan. So quite expensive. You mentioned they need access to workflows, but that's all they need. They don't need to be on a certain level of like a marketing enterprise or things like that to leverage your app inside HubSpot. 
Yeah, that's right. If, if they just have the workflows feature, and I think, I'm not sure how it all works, but I believe it's an, I know it's an operations hub, but yeah. if you can, you know, however you get the workflows feature from your AE there at HubSpot, you can call this then. And we can, Super we basically powerful. add a, an app. It's just that run model step. And then, yeah, any workflow can use it and then get the data back and use that to update, really update anything. And one really powerful example, we have a customer that we're working with now who's a big HubSpot enterprise customer. And they're using this to essentially build their own you could call it almost like a clear bit. And what I mean is yep. they're in a certain in industry. And so every time a new person signs up or they have a list of URLs, they're actually using Summit to then go gather just a bunch of data off the internet and enrich their HubSpot account with all of that you know, gathered information, right? So that's a way that they're using it. It's really powerful. It's sort of build your own clear bit, if you will. Yeah, yeah, that's unreal. And I think another one, I can see a lot of use cases, especially for SaaS companies, both on the sales side, like you said there, that they're obviously getting some data about potential prospects, but even some SaaS companies might have some quite complex pricing calculations that they need to send out. And as you mentioned, yes. that if like, if, if numbers is typically the thing that we see sort of no coders struggle the most with, and that's where you have to, like you said, move to a JavaScript. Um, yep. I'm really interested to see that um, this is something that's now possible just using like a visual interface, creating yep. these more complex calculations. That's right. So here's a pricing model. You know, it's very basic, but number of units, price, taxes, fees, etc. It's all here. And so we actually have a, no a lot of customers building usage based enterprise or complex pricing models in Summit. And then Summit's just a great place to host a pricing model that you're going to use from, you know, maybe your intercom widget, maybe your, like you said, HubSpot workflow, Zapier, build me a quote type of thing. Super good for that. And you don't have to write any code. Amazing. Cool. Then thank you so much for the uh, demo. I think I've got a couple of like wrapping up questions. So first yeah, of all, what's the best way for someone to get started with Summit? I noticed there were some certain like syntaxes in there that you were using. So maybe it's slightly different to yeah. building in Zapier or in Make, but what do you typically yep. see as the learning curve for new Summit users? Yeah, the best way to get started is to start with one of these quick start templates. If you see, you know, the basic shapes, we're, we are going to require that folks learn, you know, these building blocks, but we do have a bunch of guides and information on how to use those. You are typing text. I think that gives us, us, and I say as no coders, tremendous flexibility to type a little text, but it is, like you said, a little bit more like working with a spreadsheet than it is like working with a completely forms-based interface. And so we have a very rich set, I think, of documentation. You can also reach out to us over intercom, but we have, you know, complete documentation here. And we also have, which is pretty fun, we have built our own GPT assistants. Oh, so nice. if you have GPT plus, you can actually go to this assistant and you can ask it questions about how to write or how to build something in Summit and it'll actually generate, it'll generate answers for you. One last thing, Jan, before we shift yeah. is, and this is, I think, super helpful for folks that are maybe sharing or collaborating. Every model you build inside Summit is also text-based. And I, I want to show you what I mean by that. So this model can be imported as text and it can be exported as text. And that's one thing that we're doing that I think is very unique is that because we've made the decision to work and build from a language that's more like spreadsheets, the ability to share, show, and import, export, and maybe even build these as templates for you know your customers. So if you want to build a function in Summit that say does this, put it up on you know Lemon Squeezy or Gumroad or someplace like that and sell it, or just use it as a free you know a free offering, you can actually write text-based models in Summit for other people to use. Amazing, and I can already see that from that uh, little text snippet that you obviously protecting API keys and, and things like that out yes. of the box. So someone would just import this, they'd have yep. to reconnect their API keys and then they're pretty much uh, good to go. It just works, exactly. Very cool. And then like maybe just with, with wrapping it up. So uh, one question that we always like to ask here on the, the nine minute tool demos, which is often the, some say, say the million dollar question, but uh, <laughs> what's, uh, what's, what's your pricing uh, look like? Because obviously I think your solution has so much value to add. As you mentioned, it's a good workaround for, let's say the, where HubSpot might not have enough features or might make you pay exorbitant amount of money to get those features in an enterprise level. Or sometimes you might be doing something in Zapier that just would otherwise take so many operations, you're making it a lot more efficient. So is your yeah. pricing sort of tapping into that a little bit? Absolutely. So we think that one thing about being a developer, and I've been a developer for 20 years as well, is that we get to get started with things really in a sandbox and kind of pay as you go. So we've implemented that for Summit as well. We do have a zero dollars to start. Everything you build and run inside of the development environment is free. It's only once you make a call from APIs, Zapier, HubSpot, Clay, et cetera, that it's uh, charged for. 
and it's completely usage based. So we have a credits based system. If you're familiar with Clay, yep. Clay has a credits based system as well. I think it's the future because it means that if you know if you get 25 cents or five dollars worth of value, you pay us 10 cents or five cents. That feels fair, and there's no minimum hurdle that you have to overcome. And I also think from a sales standpoint, this is very nice because maybe you say, look. I think it'd be awesome to do this for our prospects, but we have a thousand prospects a month. You could just do this for five or 10 <laughs> for almost nothing and just see if it's worth it, right? And if it is end up yeah. worth it, then you can scale your usage. But like, it means that we built our pricing so that proofs of concept or trials are almost free and building things inside Summit is completely free. Awesome. Well, then I, yeah. I'm certainly uh, very excited to get to get my hands into it and check about check it out a little bit more. Um, for anyone else interested, we are going to leave links in the description below. So to, for you to check out Summit and maybe share some of the, the documentation that Matt shared uh, during this demo. As always, if you uh, found this demo interesting and you're looking forward to the next tool that we feature, please, as we say, like and subscribe to, to 9x on YouTube. And we will see you next time. But uh, from my side, Matt, thank you so much. And uh, looking forward to test out Summit. Thank you, Jan.